All right. Welcome to the Online Giving Breakdown. Very happy to have everybody here. Uh, my name is Stephen Boudreau. I am the Vice President of Brand and Community at Virtuous. And you might be wondering, what does that have to do with online fundraising? And why are you here? Why do you deserve the right to tell me anything about my donation page? Well, those are good questions. And whether or not I have the right to do it, uh, I'm happy to offer um, some of the wisdom I've garnered uh, from the past 20 years. In a past life, I was the co-founder of a platform called Raise Donors, which is how I got to Virtuous. Uh, so I've spent my entire career working in the online fundraising space, um, talking to nonprofits about how to do it better, and learning about how nonprofits uh, feel and the, the pain points there, the suffering, and all the things that suck the joy uh, from our collective lives. You know, most of the most of us in in and around nonprofits didn't, you know, we didn't come to this space to spend our days in spreadsheets or even software. We came to make an impact. And so, when your donation page gets in the way of that, that can be pretty deflating. Um, but when it can help you do that. Um, well, that's pretty transformative. So I want to talk about today, um, I'm not really going to be talking so much about technology. Um, we're really going to be talking more about the message, the way we communicate, the things we say. And so I'm going to pull up just a few slides. This is not going to be a time uh, where we're going to have a big slideshow, but I want to give you some baseline points from where we're coming from. Uh, so before I do that, if you're here and have a donation page that you want reviewed, I need you to put that into the chat. Uh, Jennifer is here with me, and she will let me know the pages that need to be pulled up. I've already got one uh, that was submitted to me last night, but we're doing this on the fly. Uh, so before we get going, I, I promised you a delightful slideshow, uh, and that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to pull that up, and we're just going to go through a few things because I think it's important to understand uh, a few things here. So. One thing to get is that online giving is growing. Over the past three years, uh, it has grown by 42%. And as of last year, represents 12% of most nonprofits' income. Now, your organization might be 50%, 80%. It might be 1%. But the trend is going upward. So that's why all of this matters. Uh, the next thing I want you to understand, and the next two slides are probably the most important to understand like, uh, what's going on is that 98.6% of people who visit nonprofit websites do not make a donation. And the next one is the one that's gonna, gonna rattle your bones. 83% of the people who visit donation pages leave without making a gift. So that means someone actually clicked your donate button and they went there and didn't do anything. So what does that tell us about people who arrive at our donation pages? Well, the important thing to realize is that people are, when, when they go to your donation page, they're not, they're not done. They're not, it's not like, oh, we've got the donation. You know, they're not completely committed to seeing that through to the end. They still require convincing. One of the things we need to understand about donors is that they are inherently skeptical, almost like us as shoppers out in the world. When I, when I see a commercial on TV, uh, because Burger King tells me that they're the king of hamburgers, I don't leave that commercial and go, well, I guess the king has been crowned and things are all settled. No, we, we approach advertising, we approach messaging with skepticism. And so the thing that we need to understand is that our donation experience, our emails that we send out, our websites, everything we do, the way we answer the phone, the way we respond to, to emails, it's all a process. And so I think we should all embrace a culture of optimization. It's something we're trying to do more and more here at Virtuous. But, you know, what does it mean to optimize? So, uh, a lot of times we use the word optimization and we think, oh, well, there's just an optimization machine that we, we throw our donation page in and out on the other end comes an optimized donation page. But that's not really the case because optimization is a process. So if you look at these two pages and I asked you, which one is optimized? What would you say? Like, is it the one on the left or is it the one on the right? Well, the truth is there's no way to know because optimization is a process. There's not like a, a badge that you put on your site that's like, hey, you're visiting an optimized page and it never really ends. And so same thing here. Uh, which car is optimized? Which dog is optimized? Well, actually, they're both good boys, so they're both optimized. But the I idea I want you to understand is optimization is a process. And it's a process that, well, we'll get to that in a second. 
<laughs> We're going to get to that in a second. So I can never do one of these talks without first sharing these words of wisdom from Tom Northup. And that is that all organizations are perfectly designed to get the results they are now getting. That includes you and that includes me. So if we want different results, we must change the way we do things. So right now, if your online giving is going up, if it's staying flat, it's going down, whatever it is, everything that you have been doing is perfectly designed to get the results you're now getting. So if you want to change what you're getting, it requires some courage. You know, it requires first the courage of saying, hey, maybe, maybe we need to change some things. But then the next thing is like, well, what do we change and how do we do that? And that is what the process of optimization really brings to us. And so right here, here's the money slide. Optimization is not the moving around of images, changing the color of the button, changing your headline. Really, it's about optimizing thought sequences. So as we look at donation pages today, I want you guys to see through that lens. Hey, what is the donor doing? What, how are they thinking? And so if you think about the journey that a donor goes on on your donation form, and really you can think about this on any journey that donors are doing with how they communicate with the organization holistically, with how a volunteer experience happens, with how a gala goes down, what we're doing is optimizing the way people think. And so what we want is as people go through this journey, we want them to hit a decision point, which is a friction point, and we want them to say yes. Because the moment we say no is when things go off the rails. So for example, let's say I'm filling out the donation form, or I get to a page. Hey, I, I see a headline. Oh, that, that sounds good. I'm going to keep reading. Oh, look, there's an image. That's nice. I'm going to keep going. OK, first name. Great. Last name. Great. Hey, what's your social security number? What? Like, that's friction. And I want you to think about it on a scale. As we look at donation forms, as you look at donation forms, we're we're going to be talking here for 40 minutes, but really, the journey goes on forever. But as you think about your donation page, everything that you give is value, and everything that you ask for is cost. So if I give ask somebody for their first name and last name, there's cost there. But it's not a ton of cost because I haven't done anything unexpected. But also, I've given a lot of value in what I'm telling them about our organization, what your donation means to this organization. But if you think of everything that you ask for as being cost, you always have to think of it almost like a budget. Like, hey, I, I have to outweigh the cost with value. Because the more value you provide, the better your opportunity it is that they will conclude with the big yes, the heck yes, where they fill out the form, they hit donate, and it's done. And one of the things that should be kind of philosophically in your mind as you think about online giving is that when I go to Amazon and I, I buy a new pair of Nikes, the reward for that transaction will occur in two days or three days whenever at my front door I've got a shoebox. I'm like, oh, cool, I've got new shoes. But the donor experience is something much different because the moment that the thing that they're going to experience in the moment, and I don't mean like forever, I just mean in that moment is happening as they fill out your form, as they read your value proposition, and they hit the donate button. Like that is that is the rush. That is the feeling that they are part of your community, that they are making a dent for good in the world. So you have to be really thoughtful about this because we're not trafficking in the world of sneakers and sunglasses and shirts. We're talking about making a huge impact in the lives uh, of the people of the world. So I just want you to understand when I talk about optimization, that's what I'm talking about. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that's enough of the slideshow. Let's go ahead. I'm going to stop sharing this, and I'm going to pull up uh, some donation pages that I've uh, got ready to go. But Jennifer, have we gotten any? OK. So maybe I'll just pull up one, and uh, we'll go from there. I am going to share my browser here. Window. Okie dokie. So I've got one page here. I've got a few other tabs open, but we'll skip the other ones because those are ones I just prepped. So after we talked about the one that's on the screen here, let me go to my browser. Uh, we'll go on. So, uh, so here we got an organization called Crossroads Foundation. So um, right away, there are things that you can say are positive, and there are things that I could see immediately we want to change. And we haven't even looked at the actual form. We're just talking about what I see on the screen. 
one of the things that is really effective is being personal. You know, the more personal, the more you kind of connect what a donor and who a donor is supporting, what they're giving to, the better. So right away, this photo is clearly not a stock photo. These are real people. These are people that are impacted. And right away, you see support our scholars. However, I would say that the headline, support our scholars, is right away, it, it has an opportunity for us to um, experiment. So one of the things I skipped in the slides is, is talking specifically about what makes a strong value proposition. And so for the purpose of this conversation, a value proposition is defined as why should I give to you rather than some other organization or at all? And so there's kind of four levers that we can pull when we met, talk about making a better value proposition. One is appeal. So how badly does your ideal donor want to give to your cause? Clarity, how quickly can they understand? Exclusivity, how can a donor make this impact with you versus someone else? Like, can I specifically give to these scholars? See, that's why the photo really helps. Because if I just said, hey, you can help people, you know, students at schools, oh, all right. But what about these specific students? And then lastly, credibility. Can your donors trust what you're saying? So appeal, clarity, exclusivity, credibility. Support our scholars is where I would suggest that we get more specific. Maybe one of the things you could do would be to pick one of the students and tell their story. So let's imagine that this kid's name is David. Imagine if we told David's story a little more. Support students or support scholars like David. Maximize their potential. Right away, I'm getting a little more peek into what my donor dollars are going to do. And it also increases your exclusivity, your credibility, but really your, your clarity. Probably one thing you're gonna learn about me if you don't know me already is that clarity is like, it's like my love language. It's like the thing I love to talk about. Uh, whenever I have found like that I have, I've found like, oh, that, that, that relationship got in trouble or oh, I made a mistake at work. I can usually point back to a moment where I wasn't clear or I didn't ask for clarity. Uh, so it's the same with our online donation forms and our online giving pages. The more we can be clear, the closer it kind of bridges that, here's a way to put it, it shortens the distance between you and your donors. And more importantly, it shortens the distance between the donors and the impact they're gonna make. So right away, that would be my, my first suggestion on this page is to talk about uh, scholars more specifically because support our scholars means, can mean anything. So we tell David's story. Now we can start to talk about specifically because every one of these kids might be changed in a different way. They might be lifted very differently from the Crossroads Foundation. Uh, so if you can embody one of those stories, that's what I would suggest as like, hey, workshop that idea. Uh, as we go down this page, we've got these different giving levels, which I think is great. Uh, but also we gotta remember, there's almost like this curse of knowledge that we live with. And within the Crossroads Foundation, I'm sure that the idea of a friend, a mentor, a leader, and a partner means a lot to you. But as a donor, I, you're almost talking to me like a marketer. It's like, I get that friend, mentor, leader, and partner are sort of academic terms, but maybe there's a better way to lead, uh, lead with what the $10 a month can do. And so I would lean more into this part than that part. Um, so if I'm a friend, let's talk more about what $10 a month could do for one of our scholars. And in that way, you're leading with value rather than cost. Oh, I wanna be a friend that costs me $10 a month. Okay, we're just two words in and it's all cost. Let's lead with value. What does $10 a month give? Okay, that's pretty cool. So I think that's enough for that page. Uh, I really appreciate you guys sending this page in, but already with those ideas, I think there's a lot that you could do. And remember, we're trying to optimize thought sequences. Um, I know we've got a whole form that we could look at down here, but really when we start with the value proposition and we keep just trying to work that, you're going to see learnings and hopefully those learnings will lead to increases in giving. The goal is always a learning. Keep that in mind. If there's anything my friends at Next After have taught me, the goal is learning. And even if giving goes down because of a change you made, you learn something and it helps you get back up. All right. Uh, where can I find uh, a page? Jen. All right. Pinned to the top of the chat. Okay, so Foundation Lakeshore, is that what we're going to? All right, let me make sure I got the right browser open before I click this. Copy link address. All right, 
Now, I had some time to look at that other form. Here we're doing everything on the fly. So this is when it gets real, guys. All right, so this is the Lakeshore General Hospital Foundation. Right away, I see a way to help. <laughs> so um, one of the things to keep in mind when you think about a donation page is that we have one objective from the page. Anyone have any guesses as to what that objective is? It's to make a donation. It's for the donor to see their way through. You've got your whole website. You've got every other communication that you deal with in your life to get them to learn about your newsletter, watch your videos, read your blog, log into your page. But on a donation form, we want to remove as many distractions as possible. And on this page, we haven't even gotten to the form yet. There are many distractions. And it's all of these buttons up here. Everything up here is an exit point. It's, so it's like an exit button. It's like if you were flying in a, in a jet with, with top, top Gun Maverick and you, you've got an eject button and it's going to throw you out of the plane. That's what these are. And so all of these, it's not like this information is not good, but it's counter to the point, to the objective, to the goal, which is to have someone complete their donation. So as we scroll down this page, right away, we've got an image of a hand with a heart in it and the word donate. Then we have make a difference and support your Lakeshore today. These are the first impressions. These are the first words that people are reading. We don't, well, you know what? Let me say what I'm about to say. I should have started with this. Everything that I'm telling you guys today, I am coming with it 100% with a heart of humility. I may make suggestions that sound like didactic, fact, didactic facts. I'm only speaking from experience. Only you can learn about what your donors respond to and what they need and what makes them tick. So I'm going to give you best practices upon which you launch from. Some of the things that I've learned from other nonprofits may not apply to you, but there's only one way for you to know if they don't apply to you, and that's by testing. So what I'm about to say is just coming from experience. It's not a, hey, you're doing a bad job. That's not the point at all. But think about this. Donate, make a difference, and support your Lakeshore today. These are the first impressions. This is the first words. These are the first thoughts that I'm giving them uh, to process. Donate is, is it's just kind of a wasted opportunity because it's just kind of it's cost right away. It's like donate, donate, give, give, give. Let's get to what really matters in the moment. So imagine if instead of all of this up here that we've seen on the screen, we immediately, when I hit donate, I go to an experience like this. And so make a difference and support your Lakeshore today. I like that you underline your because it's speaking to the donor, but it's also very, it's still, ironically, very organization centric. And when we're trying to appeal to the heart of the donor, when we're trying to kind of make an emotional connection, we want to speak to the impact of the donor. And so when we talk about your Lakeshore, make a difference and support your Lakeshore today, we might be better to try and experiment with something like your generous gift makes a difference for patients. Your kind of like what I was telling earlier, maybe there's a story we can tell. But we want to connect like this is how you are making a difference, not how Lakeshore is making a difference. They know that Lakeshore is the vehicle, the vessel through which they can make good happen in the world. Now is an opportunity for you to invite them to make an impact as well. So that would be a workshop. Workshop that idea. Workshop that just that title. Another thing to keep in mind is when you're optimizing, when you're experimenting, you can change your entire page if you want. But as you get going, and you want to run experiments, just change one thing. Because otherwise, you're not going to know what, what worked, what really clicked with people. Um, so I'm going to give a lot of ideas here. But you might just take one and be like, well, let's try that. You know, let's see if Steven has any good ideas or he's just a lunatic. Um, so as we go down this page, let's read some of this together. Uh, thanks to the generosity of our donors, Lakeshore General Hospital is able to ensure patients have access to the highest quality of care close to home. So that's great. So we're talking about the generosity of our donors. Little things that you can do, little little mind optimizations. Thanks to the generosity generosity of donors like you, kind of hearkening back up here. Because what we want to do is we want them to feel a connection to impact, not necessarily your organization. You'll have plenty of time elsewhere to make that happen. And, and when I say elsewhere, I mean on this page. But right away, we want to draw them close to the cause, draw them close to the value and you know, minimize the cost. Uh, so as we go down here, um, 
I have no issue. A lot of people talk about lots of content, little content, which is better. It might even be a question that's come up in the chat. I don't know. Again, that's something you have to experiment with. You have to know your audience. But the idea isn't whether a lot of copy or a little bit of copy is best. It's value and cost. What are you saying? Are you increasing value? Or are you just giving fluff? Are you just filling the page? You know, a lot of times we don't realize how impactful giving can be. In fact, do I have that? I don't have this open. I was going to show you a little case study. Uh, so there was an organization. I think it's like the Texas Historical Society. I'm from Texas. Uh, but they were doing this fundraising campaign, and uh, this agency was, was working on that. And so their donation page was, in their mind, really optimized two or three paragraphs of copy, and the form was right below that. Well, the agency came in and said, well, people from Texas really like Texas, and they like to talk about Texas. And so they wrote copy. It was just huge. It was just like scroll, scroll, scroll. Well, it ended up resulting in like nearly 150% increase in giving. So I tell you that anecdote to just be like, don't be afraid to have lots of copy, but be afraid of boring your audience, of not giving them value, of turning them away. The reason I talk about clarity so much is because clarity draws people in. When I understand, when I get it, when you're talking to the, when you're reading my mail, you're like, oh, this, this person gets it. They get me. They're going to be drawn closer. They're going to want to be a part of the conversation that you're having. So that's what you want to do uh, with the donation form. Another thing to keep in mind about human brains is that we like to scan even if we are interested. And so I like this idea of getting very specific uh, about what it is. Some recently funded donor funded projects. I love that too, because you're saying like the donors made this happen. It wasn't Lakeshore who made this happen. You helped make this happen. And then Lakeshore does their job. They help people get healthy. So um, let's see if we go down this form. Um, let's see if there's anything else. OK, here's an opportunity to talk about one point. So um, this is a general donation page. So if I go to the Lakeshore General Hospital Foundation website and click Donate, you know nothing about me. You just are giving me a donation form. So this right here, this is a point of friction. However, on a general donation page, it's not a terrible point of friction because I don't know enough. Like, hey, are these people really, do they care a lot about cancer or surgery? Like, I don't know. So letting them choose is prudent in that place. You can also experiment by just like, hey, what's, you know, what's the most important thing to us and hiding this thing entirely. I bring that up because a campaign donation page, so a campaign I'm talking about you emailed, you, maybe you segmented your email list, and you're like, hey, we're going to send out an email to everyone who's been impacted uh, through cancer. And we're going to, you want to send them to a page where they don't have to make this choice. Because one, you're introducing fiction that is unnecessary because they've already, you've, you're reaching out to these people for a reason. They've already indicated that oncology is something that really matters to them. So that's one less point of friction. One, it also tells them by asking them this question, you kind of tell them, oh, I, I don't know you. I, I'm just, it's kind of becoming all ever so slightly more impersonal and so more cost. So just keep that in mind. When you think about donation pages, you know, back in my raised donors days, we had a lot of organizations ask, well, why do I need more than one donation for? Well, why would I need that? Well, this is why. This is why. Because the more and more you want to personalize your communication, the more and more you want to speak to segments of your audience, the more and more you want to grow your impact, it means doing the work of getting to know your donors. And it is work. You know, there's there's no technology where you click a button and suddenly everything is personal. Think about your relationships with your friends. It's not like, oh, I like Jen. We're best friends because I said so. It's like, no, that takes years and years of getting to know each other. It's the same thing with your donors. And when we talk about donor retention and the you know, the staggering low number, I think it's something like 75 to 80% of donors never come back. A lot of that has to do with just missing the opportunity. It's not, you know, it's not profits when we're like, well, forget them, who cares? They already cashed their checks. It's just, we get overwhelmed. So it, it does take work. It takes a commitment to like, well, what can we do to keep in touch with people, to get to know them better? And then what do we do with that knowledge? So this <laughs> probably didn't think I was gonna go into that based on this drop down, but that's just thinking about general donation page versus campaign donation page. The last thing I'll say about this page uh, is um, for, for, a, for a website like this in honor and memory is critical, but you need to know what kind of organization you are. 
because there's a lot of questions that you can ask post gift that would be better to not include in your donation form process. I think for uh, Lakeshore here, this is a very important question to ask on their form. Um, but otherwise, if there are questions like if you have comments, if you're gonna ask people, like all the, the high cost questions, uh, sometimes an honor and memory of can be that, especially if your process is a little clunky. See if you can find another way to ask those questions after they've completed the process. Okay. Oh, question. What is the question? Is it pinned at the top? Doesn't the amount of copy impact the experience on smaller devices like phones, let alone watches versus desktops? Uh, yes, it can. Everything I say is always going to be yes, maybe, because it really depends. Now, um, there are ways with some. Now I'm going to get a little more into technology. I don't like to get into technology on this, but there are ways for you to have different levels of copy appear depending on the device that people are using. However, as you think through the copy that you're giving, it shouldn't necessarily be seen through the lens of, let me say this, it shouldn't primarily be seen through the lens of, well, are they are they gonna see this on a phone? Or are they gonna see this on uh, a desktop? Really the question is, is there enough value for me to say this at all? So whether or not you're saying three sentences or 30 sentences, <laughs> 3,000 words. Um, it's really about thinking of it through the lens of the value. I'm not uh, encouraging everyone, hey, you guys should go write paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. I'm trying to encourage you all to focus on value. And so it's very wise for you to be asking this question of, well, what about someone who's looking at it on their watch? You know, that's, a, that's a probably a very small use case. But still, the fact that you're asking these questions is telling me that you're creating a culture of optimization in your own mind, maybe even in your organization. Because a lot of times even asking the question is a healthy exercise. Because otherwise, you could just be missing out on opportunities for people to feel seen. Um, so anyway, the, the, the short answer to that is to focus on value. And if you want to make your site bulletproof, so hey, we are going to create a limit. We're going to experiment by only having you know, 200 words, whatever it is on our form. Try and make those the most valuable, important 200 words that you use. You know, just savor every word, edit, chop, replace. Don't be afraid to chop and edit because a lot of times we, I've been a writer a lot of my life too. Oh, I don't want to give up that sentence. I don't want to give up that sentence. These words are precious to us, but we need to think what's precious to the donor. What is going to connect? So excellent question. Um, good to go to the next page. Okay. Uh, let me grab it here and bring it in. All right. So this is Santa's Anonymous. All right. So here's an interesting thing. We just talked about removing exit points. Up here we have this menu. Uh, this is kind of a nice way to have your cake and eat it too. Uh, it's still an eject button, but it is like there's work I have to do to go there. You're not just presenting me with the options to leave. You're like, hey, if you want to leave, click this button. So this is definitely uh, worth an experiment. Uh, another thing that's cool, uh, I, this kind of has the vibe of a stock photo, um, but it's a very effective and sweet photo. Like, it's very thoughtful. They're, the Santa Anonymous is trying to communicate something very clear. So you don't have to use a photo. I think using photos is very good and very strong because what we're trying to do is create an emotional connection so the more we can tie the photo with our message the better but ha ha, ha there's a problem what is our message you know it's down here i've already initiated the process of friction i've already initiated the process of cost before i even tell them that they can make a difference i'm asking them how much money they want to give me does that make sense so this is all about the optimization of the thought sequences. This isn't about uh, Santa's Anonymous, you're doing a bad job. No, it's about thinking through optimizing those thought sequences. So let's start here. You can make a difference. Awesome. That is also um, unspecific. How can I make a difference? What kind of difference can I make? How am I going to help this kid or this kid? Like, let's, let's try and get a little more specific. You can make the Christmas of a child 
the best one they've ever had. You know, now we're getting a little more specific. Now I'm also like, oh, I want to do that. I want to be a part of that. You can make a difference isn't missing the mark. What it's doing is it's missing the opportunity, the opportunity to be a little more specific, an opportunity to increase that value before we get to the point where we ask for the gift. Because of your gift, children in our community will have new books to read, teddy bears to snuggle, and toys to play with. I, I mean, I'm ready to give right now. Teddy bears to snuggle? That's good. But you know why that's good? Because it triggers something in me. It makes it feel very personal. Either I was a kid once with a teddy bear, I have children who like teddy bears that they snuggle with, or just even if you don't have kids or family, it's just it's connecting it with with something emotional. And the truth is that when we touch the people's hearts, the whole point we're talking about this conference is like giving is personal. And the line teddy bears to snuggle is very personal. You know, Santa's Anonymous could get more clinical. We could get more factual. We could be like, hey, 75% of every donation goes towards. Not that those things aren't good, but we're leading with the heart. And it's really important to do that. Test after test after test has shown the more the emotional you connect, the more emotional the appeal is, and it connects with the heart, the better the conversion rate is going to be. All right. So, um, so the biggest thing I would suggest here is take all of this and put it above this. Make a contribution. It's kind of like on the Lakeshore page, the donate. It's, you probably just don't need that there, but if for whatever reason your website forces you to do that. Um, I think if you move the copy up at the top and you start tracking your online giving, I feel pretty confident you're going to see some type of move in the upward direction. And then once you start doing that, and that's without even changing the copy, as you start to tell more stories, like who is this kid? How did I help him? You know, let's say his name is Timmy. Timmy's always dreamed of flying. He loves airplanes. And look, there's a photo of him holding a Lego. He loves building. He loves creating. Timmy and hundreds of kids just like him don't have someone to give them gifts every year at Christmas. Like there's, you know, as you start to weave that story together, it's real. It's not fake. Like that's the thing. Like you want to connect with people authentically. And that's why the photo and the story makes a lot of sense. When you connect those dots, you start to have the donors feel, I can make a difference for people just like Timmy. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> Take my money because I want to make an impact. Like that's, that's, that's the stuff. I got a little, I got a little excited saying that. All right. Um, we have another one here. Oh, question. Okay. I'm not seeing the question. I see Lisa's. Oh, here it is. Uh, is a copy free donation page created to be linked from other pages and stories a bad idea? Um, well, good and bad and right and wrong aren't really the terms that I want to use in this. Uh, I think that it's better if you do have copy, because think about where we started. Uh, I think it was 83% of people who go to a donation form, so a page where you're asking, don't complete the form. So remember, when people come to your donation page, just because I click the donate button does not mean that I'm ready to give. It just means I'm expressing interest. And so we always have to remember that we need to make the case, and that case comes through the heart and it's heavy on value, low on cost. And so if I click a form or I click a button and all I get is a form, I'm taking the risk that I am overdosing on cost. Now there are different kinds of forms. I know that there's all kinds of forms. When you click, it just, it appears on the page without taking you anywhere. It just kind of like it pops up or it slides in. Then that is all the more reason for you to be very thoughtful and careful about all the copy on your site. It's not important that your website have thousands of pages. It's important that every page is delivering your value proposition with clarity, uh, with you know making that appeal um, really valuable, making the it feel making it feel exclusive, making it feel credible. So and that means that every page of your site you should treat like a donation page because your objective is to get them to become part of the cause. Okay, does that answer the question? You think? Okay. So Lisa, uh, I see your page here. Let me copy the address and put it in here. All right. Okay. 
Um, okay. There's a lot. There's a lot good here. It's also kind of what the previous page was. We do have some copy before we get into the numbers, which is great. Uh, so that just means, Lisa, that I would look at this great future start here. Our mission is to enable all young people, especially those who need us most, to reach their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens. You want to be really just so thoughtful about those words. And these words, they're fine. They're good. But I do think that we're talking mostly about our mission. We're talking about the Boys and Girls Club of the PD area. Sorry, it's really small on my screen. Um, Maybe it's great futures or your gift empowers great future. You know, if you start talking about, you know, your gift enables young people, especially those who need it most. Just that little, that little shift is now making it more like, oh, I see myself in the story versus seeing the Boys and Girls Club as kind of the hero of the story. We're trying to make the donor kind of feel like, oh, I'm, I'm the one who can really take this opportunity to make a difference. And the Boys and Girls Club is the vehicle or the, the conduit through which I'm able to make this. Um, so going down here, I don't have a problem with this being down here. It just leads me to ask the question, why is it down here? Why is it here at all? Like you, you might just want to think about how this page is structured through that lens. If this is worth talking about, why am I tucking it beneath the place where they may not see it at all? Because if the point of this page is to get someone to click that button on this form, why is it down here? Now, looking at the stuff that's down here, I do like this over here. This is something to experiment with. Show this or don't show this. But what this does is this increases trust. It gives me credibility because the Boys and Girls Club can tell you, hey, this is your opportunity to make a great future. But you know what? Sharice did it. South State Bank did it. Kyle did it. Good old Anonymous did it too. But it's kind of building that credibility. It's kind of like when you go to a, a, a restaurant website on Yelp and it's like, oh, four stars. And you start to read the reviews and it's like, oh, I see myself in the people that like this restaurant. I think I might go try it. So that's that's a really interesting thing to test with here. Um, so yeah, I would just I would just look at it through that lens. Why have this on the page at all if I'm going to hide it beneath the goal? That's the goal. And if you don't think the donate once button is the goal of the page, then I would encourage you to think about well, what is the goal of a donation page for your organization? Because it really should be to get them to say heck yes. Think of it. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Heck yes. That's the journey. That's the thought sequence we're trying to optimize. This is kind of derailing that a little bit by putting that, hiding it down here. Good to the next one. OK. Is the option to share your gift available through the Virtuous Giving page? Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I know in raised donors, it is. So that makes me confident in Virtuous Giving, it probably is as well. Uh, if it's not for any reason, it's not a, a thing that's all that terrible to do. But we're going to get into kind of technical nerd talk, which is my other love language, but I can't get into that right now. Um, so I'm not entirely 100% sure, but I, I think it is. Okay, I'm going to probably only have time for this one last one. This is Claire. Um, and we are in the SLO Food Bank. Where is, do we know where this is from? San Luis Obispo. All right. California. I love California. All right. So if you've been paying attention, Claire, you know right away I'm going to say, hey, let's get rid of all this navigation, all these eject buttons. These are just ways for me to leave. Uh, and again, we've got donate to the SLO food bank, to the slow food bank. Um, again, maybe think about, I don't mind having this section with an image. The image is actually wonderful. But the words. You know, it's an opportunity to connect with the heart, donate to the slow food bank. It's just, a, it, I, would, I would call it a missed opportunity. It's not bad. It's not terrible. It's just like, try, try something else there. Excuse me. Let me take a little water here. All right. Thank you for supporting our vital and caring mission. Okay. So like the previous page we were talking about, we're talking about the organization. Whose mission is vital? Ours. 
who are we trying to talk to? The donors. We want to invite them to be a part of the mission. So thanking them for supporting it is indirectly. It's going, hey, thanks for supporting us. But who they're really supporting is her. So when we connect the dots between those stories, that's where you start to see uh, the heart being moved. You know, so let's say her name is Teresa. You know, thank you for supporting um, families and children like Teresa. Well, who's Teresa? Well, now I just gave you more homework. You got you to work on the story we're telling here. Because if we start seeing, people start seeing that their money, whatever number they choose here is going to impact her, then instead of that, I might do that. But you only learn that through experiments. Uh, here's one little, I haven't talked hardly any technical at all. Here is just um, something that I would recommend you experiment with. So if I look at this form, uh, well, let's get to that in just a second. If you can, it, it would be interesting to pre-select bank account versus credit card, only because so much more of the money that you raise goes to your organization when they pay by check versus credit card. I know that's not possible for everyone, and it's also maybe not convenient for everybody, but that is definitely an experiment worth running because especially if they make a monthly gift, well, every single month you're getting more of the $100 that the donor is wanting to give to you. Uh, a campaign that sometimes some of the organizations I used to work with would run would be to try and convert monthly givers from credit card to bank account. So that's just like, now that's kind of getting more nerdy. But again, um, just talking about connecting that story here. The only other thing I was going to say is, how did you hear about us? Um, this is one of those questions that if you can move it to either the thank you page or just some other conversation that you're going to have with the donor, I would highly suggest it. Your birth month, your birthday. Again, this is all cost. This is all cost. I came here because I want to help her. And, and the further I get down here, I might start saying no. I might start saying no. I might start saying no. And all I have to do is hit that back button. And our conversation and opportunity is over. Okay, I see one question here before we wrap. Uh, Siri asks, is there a magic number for time or amount of visitors you use in terms of duration when running A-B testing? Uh, I, I would defer that to um, a speaker we just had on, Nathan Hill from Next After. There is a level that you need to reach in order for a test to be valid. And sometimes you may not have enough traffic on your website to validate that. However, I wouldn't say that you always have to be worried about, hey, is this test perfectly valid? Did we get a threshold of, let's say, 5,000 visitors in a period of time? Um, whoever is going to your website is going to give you learnings. Sometimes those learnings are with a capital L. And sometimes they're with just a little L. But you've got to do the best with the opportunity and the resources that you have. If you're operating a high traffic website, the test is going to validate itself pretty quickly. But if you're smaller, if you're dealing with much less traffic, I would see the philosophy to be incremental gains. You're not trying to take your conversion rate from 5% to 50% overnight. You're just trying to see what is connecting, what is making people want to give. So if that's from 5 to 5.5%, whatever it is, the idea is to learn. Um, so sorry I can't give you the silver bullet answer to that question, but I appreciate everyone that came, everyone that asked questions. It's no small feat to put your donation page in front of people and be like, tell me how to make it better. <laughs> that's not an easy thing to do. So thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate everything that you guys are doing to make this world a better place. You're the heroes. You're the champions. Thank you so much. I will see you next time.